Hi, I'm Kelly Freyett from Education Elements. Prior to joining Education Elements over five years ago, I played the role as a blended learning teacher in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. There, I co-designed learning experiences for middle school science students and realized through the conversations with my teammates that decision-making was one thing we had to continue to work on. In this video, I'm gonna challenge you to embrace the unknown and think about a practice that's gonna allow your strategic plan to move forward. Encourage you to follow along and look forward to seeing the magic that happens. There's a big possibility that you've already made thousands of decisions already today. Cornell University did a study that showed humans make over 221 decisions just on food in a given day. If you think about it, we wonder why we get so paralyzed when by the end of the day, we can't decide what we wanna have for dinner, what we're gonna read before bed, or even do we sit in silence? The skill of making decisions happens over time, especially when we're faced with many different decisions. The problem we can anticipate with strategic planning is many groups get in the cadence of bringing together their groups of people for countless amounts of hours to move forward a discussion. We have witnessed leaders leaving those meetings with more questions than answers. As an organization, we really need to begin to shift our practices to be more self-managed, to distribute the power, and to avoid that false promise of consensus. As district leaders and community members are creating the strategic plan, we at Education Elements encourage them to take on the mindset of safe enough to try. This phrase was adapted from Holacracy. Instead of consensus with making decisions, it's a learn by doing approach that involves decision-making as a team. When you learn to make decisions quickly and model the right purpose of that decision, people, information, and the level of risk, the model is an approach that allows all important roles to have a say in the decision-making process. This process leads to something that is more passive to more active, from fuzziness to clarity, and most of all, from being a participant to being an owner. It just spreads the decision-making power and ownership across a team. And lastly, we find that makes the assumption that all decisions made will only move an organization forward versus harming an organization. As you are making progress towards your strategic plan, we understand that if a leader or community member were to come to the group already with a solution, tension might arise. We also know, on the other hand, if you were to come to the meeting and say, what should we do? It sets up the whole strategic planning process core team to lead into hours and hours of discussion. Our team knows that the most successful strategic plans involve community involvement early on and continuously. This governance structure that we're about to share with you will show you how to present a proposal and structure it in a way that allows voice to be involved along with that decisions to be made. Number one, state facts. Two, state your interpretation. Three, summarize and state the importance of approving or removing the initiative for this instance. Fourth, start by sharing the proposal. And lastly, invite others to provide that feedback that you're looking to seek more information from. After the individual has presented the proposal, the facilitator will aim for safe enough to try, not consensus. There will be time and space for individuals within that meeting to ask clarifying questions and to provide reactions to prior to making that decision. At Education Elements, we always advise that the facilitator anticipate equal talk time for this portion of the governance structure. After the proposal has been shared, go around the entire team and allow each person to answer the question, does anyone have data that indicates that this proposal is unsafe to try? The facilitator needs to anticipate and parse through what information is valid enough to actually have a discussion around. When teams and community members continue to see themselves as decision makers and see themselves getting closer to their priorities on the strategic plan, we have seen that these teams end up staying more motivated, though faster, and are more likely to continue to engage in the process. I want you to take time to pause and reflect and think about the decisions your team has made around your strategic plan. Most of all, ask yourself, what governance structures are in place that allow your team to be able to pivot throughout the process? Thank you so much for watching. 